Baker. October, twenty twenty one. Our uh, our 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 friend and 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 much more popular video host Kevin Powell has has um, declared October twenty twenty one Subgrid Awareness Month, which oh. I think is awesome. Good job, Kevin. We'll we'll hop on that bandwagon because we were just talking about it the other day. I thought it'd be a yeah. good one for today, I, right? I would like it because I don't know how to do it, and I would love you to just show me how to. Do okay, it. let's look at it. Because I, you know, I was while well, I was thinking about this, some some use cases came to mind a little bit here. So you, I have a form, right? And this comes from I just for a minute I just copied this. That's some foreshadowing um, from Eric Meyer's article from like six years ago, where he says subgrids considered essential, and I think maybe even said towards the bottom of you're like maybe grids shouldn't even ship until subgrid is a part of them yeah, uh, I'm, uh, before grids are published into channels that didn't happen they're in mm -hmm. firefox and nothing else that's the status at the moment okay so i'm in firefox um and i think we'll come to see why he thinks that and i kind of think that too right so i want to talk about this so there's a form element here a ul inside of it which is i believe good semantics right tell you how many um form fields are in there maybe that's that's yeah. useful I think mm -hmm. that's it's a good pattern practice. for sure. I mean, I, one of the like, patterns, right? I wrap them in divs just so I can like clear the input, you know, and like make sure, you mm -hmm. know, like add some spacing and whatever, you know. But. Yeah. So if you had these and you wanted to lay them out such that like the, all the labels were the same width, you could make this like a grid, right? Uh, or display grid. That's going to do that. But then you'd go grid template columns and let's just do something really simple so you can see what's up 50 50 split let's go 50 50 split maybe we don't want that maybe we want like min content or something so they can hug the left put a little gap in there or something sure but they don't relate to each other at all right these yeah. have no like if this one got longer hence the foreshadowing it's going to get wider but it's not going to do anything to the rest of them and maybe that's just not what your your design wants maybe the design wants to have them have something to do with each other so let's not put the grid on the li let's put it on the ul instead okay Oops. now we have some more work to do right <laughs> yeah but these can be display grid too okay but then we can have them inherit the gr the column lines from above that's what subgrid is it's like just give me the the lines from the grid above it if there's okay. a grid above okay. it so grid okay template column this is the most important thing to understand i think is you you just say instead of declaring new columns you say subgrid just says give me the 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 grid lines from one above you okay and this looks weird at the moment but it's because the parent has this kind of min content and it's decided that about that is the mid content for all six of these objects for whatever reason okay. but really what you want is each li should just stretch the whole width like i'm declaring the columns up here but i kind of don't really want them down here yeah. so i can just say like grid um columns just stretch all the way you know negative one is the the end I there love that. i love that yeah does that work is there is a grid column yeah okay stretch oh. all the way and now these have to do with each other so now if i go name it's they're gonna like it's gonna be like oh the min content of all of y'all wow you know what i mean so that that's the whole that's like the power of subgrid real quickly i think yeah if we give this to designers now they will be so powerful uh <laughs> and, yeah. and i will be out of a job because my <laughs> i make the business making the labels uh 16 rems wide you know that's how i made all my money you know yeah, exactly. So, that that would be like another way to do this. Like if we pieced out of this, we could say like the you the LIs are like display flex or something. And then I don't know, what would you do? Like the label has a has a width, like a flex basis sixteen M's or yeah, something weird. Oh right? yeah, or, oh yeah. I suppose we could do it that way because now they're flex. But I think just width would work too. Width, yeah, like, that's the same yeah. diff. Yeah. I don't know. Would, do, do, does it take percentages? Yeah, I guess. Yeah, yeah. That's dangerous territory, though, right? So we've done the same thing, but they're not. The content is totally unrelated here. Like we do the same thing here. I don't even know what's going to happen. Like, is it just like going to kick over into them? Yeah. yeah, see, it's like not mm, content aware. Nope. I don't like it. 
Uh, yeah, setting widths. You know, this is kind of an anti-pattern. This like well, you set a magic number and one thing we don't really talk about too is if you go back up to that the the grid example, or can you re-enable it? Sub mm-hmm. sub grid example. Um, you know, like translation. This is a big deal because you go into German or something, everything becomes like forty percent longer, twenty thirty percent longer. You go into Chinese, it becomes two like kanji characters you know like right like so i mean even the font matters here and stuff yeah it just makes it so robust because otherwise you were just specifying magic numbers right before and now it's like yeah there is kind of another way to do this perhaps let's try i think if we went like display contents that's that's why some people are like why do we need display contents okay why do we need subgrid we can just do that, which in a way it just wipes out the LI. It's mm-hmm. just it, it behaves as if the LI doesn't exist. Mm-hmm. That look at that instantly worked. It's just that LIs have semantics, so yeah. when you wipe them out like that, that's not good. I don't know the latest on this, so I apologize for that. doing a video about it. And I don't know. I think there might have been a a moment in which this became cool to do again, but I cannot yeah. vouch for that entirely. So no, I think the subgrid would... makes a little more sense to me anyway. Well, and you could use that support to maybe trigger that, right? Like, you Well, you can, support. right? Because we have to think about that. Because, I mean, if we're going to go this route, Chrome's not going to take that. And, you know, like it or not, Chrome has pretty pretty massive share, right? So, you know, this is what that looks like is like at supports. And then you can put, you know, by the way, there's like selector. Did you know that you could, you could test selectors with that supports? Aww. Anyway. It's well, like okay. super well supported, but normally you just put a key value pair in there and the key so value like pair then is column subgrid. exactly mm-hmm. because you can't just test for grid, grid template columns because that does work in something like Chrome, but this is then where we would put this, I guess, you know, and then, and then you'd put the opposite of it. Um, let's just get rid of the contents thing. I just felt like we should cover that, but. I guess we did cover it. So now because we're in Firefox and it does support it, you get this. Now, what about the alternate styling? This is where you'd go not and then put whatever Display else you're going to do. Or you could uh, do you it know the what? Way, I right? wonder that actually just might do the trick. I'm going to go ahead and peek in Chrome and you're not going to see it because I didn't share that window. But I'm pleased to report that, yes, indeed, that works. So <laughs> sorry for the mission Black accomplished Luster. we did it <laughs> yeah maybe that would that would verified be verified okay. account told me it works um yeah, yeah okay really want it to totally fail but you know no uh, well there the the accessibility semantics i know it was a big issue and i don't know the result and i follow browsers so that tells me like yeah. <laughs> like something um it wasn't broadcast enough like hey use it now so um mm-hmm yeah i don't know that's uh well, let's keep putting a point on yeah. it here's here's kevin's video so high five more consistent layouts he did cards in his and this was the problem that he said like this mostly looks fine right but then he had some problems with well it kind of depends on the content here all of a sudden these images based on you know words and oh, weird stuff with layout yeah, it's one yes yeah, 100 pixels wide or 10 pixels it's wide. because each card in this layout has its own grid these grids are not aware of each other so what he talks about is we'll move the grid up to the card grid and then have the grid use th- those same columns now they're all aware of each other now they're all participating on the same grid oh that's kind of the point here and it's that's just what, that easy to be like grid template columns and like yeah it, it's kind of like inherit it's almost like that's what it, i mean that's not yeah. the right okay. thing but that's how i think of it is like go get your lines from the parent above yeah which is cool which means it could work you know nested leaf oh but too, he's you know? doing his own rows yeah you can do your own rows you know if you want so you can choose which pieces of the grid you want that's yeah. kind of cool you just end up doing this a lot meaning because i've now set up the columns here this card needs to like occupy the same amount of space. When you and I first started playing with this, we were thinking about cards, I think. So here's mm-hmm. the demo that where we got there before, which was, um, I don't know, they're little cards. So I did them in Pug just so I could repeat <laughs> them over and over just for, that doesn't yeah, matter. Yeah. It's not relevant to the video, but it was easier to then have 
some a little bit of content and short content and different titles and stuff and just do it kind of easily. So this was, is kind of awkward in a way. Like if you don't do this, I'm saying each card has f four things in it, right? It has an image, a title, content, and actions. And you can see that visually, right? Mm -hmm, image, mm -hmm. title, content, actions. Because there's four things, I set up four um, rows, right? Why don't I put columns here? Oh, where's the, oh, there are just, there just doesn't need to be columns. That's confusing too. There doesn't need to be columns because they're all just auto and that's the default. Oh, you know what I mean? But I do know that there's four of them. So okay. each, each box, I guess we call them a box, which is confusing. The card, card. mixin is a box yeah. class. Good job. Okay. Self. Um, there, because there's four things and it needs to span four rows, it would have been the same thing as going grid template rows, auto, auto but that's cause auto, we have auto. four, whatever root elements. We have the image, the H one, the content, the actions. So like, yeah, we have, right. You just don't yeah. need to say this cause it's just implied in a way. And if you didn't do that, it's just going to be awkward. The cards are going to be like, I don't know what to occupy. Ah, yeah. You know? But if yeah. I say, I want you to be four things tall, then it's all good. And it says, I know what to do. I know what to do. And okay. So then, but it's rows. The reason I'm saying go up to your parent and get those rows is so that they know about each other. So I put backgrounds on them so you can see that like now this title's longer. So it pushes this one and this one's grid cell taller. Like, yeah. I'm not sure if this is the world's most practical example, but at least you can see now that that's kind of what what happens with them yeah well Whereas, and, and previously you had zero control you know what i mean and now you can kind of make it happen so mm -hmm. yeah so if i don't if i don't do this if i say i don't i don't care like then what happens they have nothing to do with each other anymore they're just unaware of each other mm -hmm. but it's still a, it's still a grid and it's still four call or four rows tall but it's just it's awkward and they don't they don't jive with each other in that kind of I've, way. I've been a part of like interview interview questions or whatever where people were like make this row of cards the same height you know and sure. and it was like i because i was like oh that's a good question because that's 90 percent of web development <laughs> so, <laughs> so but, for the fallback in this case i just you know let, let's say i remove that for a minute you can still like get things mm -hmm. looking okay by forcing this to stretch or whatever like there's things you so can that's do the b with grade kinda. yeah that's yeah that's the b grade and and so that would be for chrome in this case so chrome catch up yo you know what I'm saying? yeah yeah so th speaking of things we, we, we may or may not know, um, have you heard of elk stack ELK? That's, um, no, but if it has elastic in it, I'm more interested. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, Elasticsearch, you know, we've done, they've been our sponsor since the first video of shop talk. So high five to them for that. The E in, in elk stack is elastic, which is, it's like MySQL, right? Only it's not MySQL. It's Elasticsearch. It's an open source technology database that you can just deploy anywhere. That's the database part of it, but it's like, that's really raw, you know, like what you need tooling on top of it or with it in order to make it like extra useful. So the K is stands for Kibana, which is like the thing that you point at an Elasticsearch instance in order to like, look at it, to okay. query it and build dashboards and all that stuff. And it's super useful and great. And that's how you like bring visibility and, you know, being able to look at your Elasticsearch stuff. And then the L is just as important. The L is like, it stands for log stash. Okay. But it's like, oh, let's say you have some data, like a CSV or an API of some kind, and you need to push that data into Elasticsearch. You give it to log stash, and log stash is the thing that like does the transformations and such that puts it into Elasticsearch for you. It's like the API for your Elasticsearch. So Whoa. You, know, you got a big CSV and you want to put it in Elasticsearch, you, that's what logs helps you do and so you know it got confusing with Elasticsearch because they added beats to it too which is just kind of like i just want to like tail a file it's like at little jobs that you want your Elasticsearch to do is beats mm -hmm. so but they just didn't add b to the acronym okay. so belk uh keebler no. <laughs> uh yeah elbow not necessary elbow. we just call it elk stack elk stack Fine. great yeah all right, that's that. Uh, we should point out that Rachel Andrew was, is uh, been all over this, of course, because she was instrumental to all of Grid happening and all that, and has been talking about Grid for years and years and years. 
like has this great post on it that talks about subgrid and this is another way to think about it so the one takeaway i want is you when you say subgrid it's a value not a property it's not like subgrid equals something it's yeah because i thought it was display home. subgrid for like my whole life i learned something today so. yeah <laughs> display yeah, yeah. subgrid i think it might have been at one point but it's okay, not okay it does matter though that when you like it, the thing the, your subgrid needs to be display grid too. Okay. Okay. You know what oh, I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. And then you use subgrid to pull in the rows and columns. Another way to think about that is, you know, I want child items to participate on the parent grid. So mm -hmm. see how E, F, and G are participating on the same grid that everything else is. Mm -hmm. That's the heart and soul of subgrid. It doesn't matter. Like this big dark rectangle down here, it could have its own grid on it that has mm -hmm. nothing to do with the parent grid. It could be display flex. It could ha be 10 grids deep. It doesn't matter. Subgrid is like, yes, I want to be my own grid, but I want to pull the grid lines from the parent. That's the way to think about it. And I think this, this model kind of demonstrates it pretty nicely. So you got A, B, and C. They're of course on the grid because the wrapper is the grid, but E, F, and G, because D is in the way, normally in Chrome, <laughs> they cannot participate on the same grid unless mm -hmm. we just get rid of D. And remember, that's what the display contents thing did. In this case, because it's just a div, maybe that would be fine. Mm -hmm. You know, like mm -hmm. let's mess with her demo or is D. It just misses D, right? Or um, display contents. I, I'm in Chrome, so it, or I'm in. This is going to be weird in Firefox because there's just a lot of styles kind of here. But if we were to right wipe now. this out with display contents, E, F, and G could still participate on that same grid. Okay. Yeah. 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 That's interesting. Because, and then you're, yeah, my mind's getting blown a bit because you're adding padding around everything, but it's still respecting the grid lines. That's really cool. Yeah. Like, they can even have their own gaps. Like, oh, really? <laughs> yeah. So I'll see what I mean. Like, but they're still like, they're kind still of like obeying. align with the parent. So it's the gap gets a little funky, but it's nice to know that you still have that kind of control. Now no, with divs, cool. it's like it feels less compelling, but what always gets you is the semantic stuff. Like don't we all love um DLs, right? And then there's mm -hmm. DTs and your DDs and stuff. You want to use this, but you're like, oh man, but I just screwed myself because now there's something in the way. There's always elements in the way of your parent grid. And that's what mm -hmm. display grid allows you to kind of wipe them away in a way, which is kind of great. Awesome. Yeah. That's the whole thing, man. That's all I got. Well, I appreciate that because I literally didn't know. So thank you.